Hi everyone, Hannah Suter here, product manager for authentication and authorization here at GitLab. Wanted to give you an update on where we are with customizable roles and permissions and how we got here and uh, give you a little summary from all of the customer research we did as well. First, let me share some pain points that I heard over and over again from the customers I interviewed. First of all, and kind of the overarching point is that the existing static out of the box GitLab roles are either too permissive or they're too restrictive. So either I have to give someone more permissions and a more elevated role than I want to, just because of maybe one or two things that role can do. Um, and that gets flagged on audits and doesn't look good from a security posture perspective. Um, or I have to give someone um, a lower role perhaps than I want to. And then anytime they need to do a certain activity I need to bump up the role and that creates some overhead for me as an administrator. So either way, as we say, one size does not fit all. Well, our static out of the box roles, those are clearly not working to fit all either. I also heard that maintainer and owner permissions are intimidating and even administrators don't want those permissions because they might accidentally do something wrong. Um, so again, it's too easy to make a mistake. I don't want that much power. Give me something that can still give me what I need to get my job done, but won't let me make mistakes. I also heard that business users are quite different from engineering users. And it doesn't make sense for maybe a product manager or a scrum master to be able to modify pipelines. But because of what that certain role can do, I'm forced to give them that permission. And then there's also a lack of auditing around permissions. Again, another very important thing from a compliance perspective. Maybe I think someone needs the maintainer role. How do I know if they're actually using the things in the maintainer role? Maybe I can bump them down to developer. How would I ever know that? Also, I need strict auditing uh, controls around if someone's role changed, when a role can change, who did it, when, how long are they in this elevated role? All of that information is very important to our customers. So some themes from the research. Um, I want to abide by the principle of least privilege. I want to have the least amount of privilege I need to do my job, and I also want those elevated privileges, if I need them, to be limited only for the amount of time that I need them, and then to be bumped back down. For enterprises, there's often a source of truth, like an identity provider, that maps to certain roles. Um, whatever group you're in in that identity provider maps to your group in GitLab, and that definitely needs to be supported from a custom roles perspective as well. I found that small and medium-sized businesses are a little bit more content with the current five roles um, than enterprises and federal use cases. However, they still see the utility and would say that they would use it as well. I don't want owners to be able to create more owners, right? Again, this is someone with a ton of privilege being an owner, and I don't want to be able to create someone else that has that much privilege. Or if I do, I need strict auditing and controls around that. Contractors and non-employees have a different life cycle than regular users. They are usually more short-lived and less privileged. And also there's a focus on separation of duties. There's a certain skill set or a certain responsibility set someone has, and there shouldn't be a lot of overlap between what the different roles can do. So we took these things and how do we solve for you know, all of these problems? What we're going to do is to allow our customers to create new custom roles, and those are based on the existing permissions matrix for now. Let me show you what I mean by that. We have this unwieldy matrix um, here in our documentation that can show you what each role can do. Think of it as creating a new role, right? So maybe I wanna create a custom role here somewhere between reporter and developer and check certain things here, but not check others. And that's what our uh, framework will enable you to do. We're going to allow you to create roles that are based on another role, but we're not going to force it. Um, it's not necessarily a template. It's more of just, you can copy something from a different role that you like, and then you can add and remove. Uh, so it's more for usability rather than forcing you to only add or only subtract from an existing role. We know how important API support is. A lot of our customers don't even ever look at our UI. So we know we need to have API support and auditing included from the start. It must work with SAML group sync. It's kind of what I was talking about on the previous slide with enterprises using uh, identity providers. Um, so we need to have that working from the start as well. And this feature will be tiered to ultimate. 
All right, so what's our iteration plan? First, this current permissions table is statically generated. Um, so it's not dynamic at all. And what we wanna do is create it so that each of these check marks is populated dynamically uh, behind the scenes by one of these role definitions. And what that's going to do, um, I do realize it doesn't provide any value to the customer. The page will look the same, um, but it does lay down that technical framework for custom roles. What we wanna do in our next iteration is to allow you to create um, a new role based on that reporter role. Uh, so it will have everything reporter does, but it will not have the ability to view source code. And the reason why we picked this for one of our first iterations is that we heard, hey, it's scary that people have uh, the ability to view source code even if they don't need it, right? Because those people can potentially copy and paste my source code. They can screenshot my source code. Um, I don't want them to have the ability to see source code. So that's one of the first things we're offering as an MVC for you to remove that ability. So number three is the really exciting spot. That's where we can create completely custom roles uh, based on almost anything from a permissions matrix. I say almost anything because there's going to be some things that don't make sense to toggle off and on. They're going to conflict. Um, so we're going to have to put some guardrails around that. For iterations four and five, these are more things that are nice to have. Uh, so um, working with our max role capability, right? Right now, you can only choose from the static roles. Whenever you're choosing max roles, we're going to put the custom roles in there and allow you to uh, make your max role based on the custom roles. And then also, now that we have new custom role definitions, your users aren't going to be able to just look at this table and know anymore, hey, my custom role um, X, what can and can't I do? Um, and that's something that we are not going to have until a later iteration. So it'll be something that we recommend that you document internally once you create your own custom roles. To give you an idea of where are we now, I put this big red arrow here to show you that we're currently working on number one. And we are working on a uh, performance MVC, as you can imagine, uh, redoing your whole uh, permissions model behind the scenes is very performance intensive. Um, and we're currently doing discovery on that, which will enable us to get to number one. And thought I, uh, what we're doing also to hopefully help make this move a little bit faster is from the 15.4 milestone on, we're dedicating twice the capacity that we've been dedicating previously to work on this feature. Um, and then our designer, Daniel, has been uh, finalizing the UX designs and he's going through usability reviews with customers. And now I'll go ahead and turn it over to Daniel who will give you a deep dive into what the UI will look like for customizable rules and permissions. Hi, my name is Daniel Mora. I'm a senior product designer with the Authorization and Authentication Group. And I want to talk a bit about the new role-based access control permissions uh, customization tool that we're trying to create here. Uh, so I'm going to walk through this prototype. It's an early prototype, just kind of a first iteration. And we're currently going through a testing phase to validate um, with users to see how they feel about this. But I, I just want to talk about it and walk through it with you today to show you how the process would work. So the idea is we would have a new section labeled roles and permissions. This would exist in both environments, either self-managed or the SAS uh, versions of GitLab. And within here, we have two sections. Uh, this would be the roles container where you have your custom roles. Uh, and we also have the standard GitLab roles that currently exist in our uh, platform. So we have guest, reporter, developer, maintainer, and owner. The idea that you would use these as kind of a template to build your own custom uh, role off of. So for example, if I were to create uh, a new developer role with uh, more or less permissions closer to maintainer or reporter based on my needs, then I could make those custom granular changes to the roles that already exist and have it be my own custom role. Below here, we have a new section that we want to implement, uh, kind of like a documentation section. It will be used further in the process as the interaction points for this customization. Um, this uh, we would like some feedback on as well. But for now, it's mostly just a space where we would hold uh, all the current permissions based off of the feature that they are associated to. So for example, namespace or the repository, they all have different permissions. 
So from here, we'll go ahead and create a new role. And this again is the container with all the permissions based off of the category. You'll see right now we have the guest as the default and that is listed here. Uh, we also have a, a space to give your custom role its own name. So from here, let's go and look just as an example. These all are the permissions that guests are allowed to do with this environment. You'll see a lot of it's been restricted. They don't really have access to a lot of things that most other roles would have. So next I'll go ahead and create a custom role. So let's say I want to base it off of the developer uh, role. So now we'll have some more permissions that the developer has access to. You'll see that here as an example. And we'll give our new custom role a title. So we'll call this one an incident manager and you see it's changed here. Next, I want to give it a custom permission. So let's say I want to give the new incident manager the opportunity to view insights in my uh, permissions. So we'll go ahead and select that and then we'll save. And now I have a new custom role labeled incident manager and I still have the original default uh, permissions, or excuse me, the new default uh, roles exist in GitLab. We want to keep these as kind of like a, a troubleshooting or a clean or pristine environment that you can use to go back and test or iterate off of. So these would be not changeable. Um, you'd have to make changes uh, to your own custom role based off of those. And that's how that we want to implement the new custom permissions and roles within GitLab. And we're looking forward to your feedback.